We are going to install a lift kit on this trailer today. It's an actual, it's a uh, axle flip kit. So we're going to take some measurements before I get started. As you can see, I've got a, a low rise on the hitch up here, but the the trailer's got a the, the front end is higher than the back end. It's not sitting level, and this tank here is pretty low to the ground for me anyway so i'm gonna take some measurements for you um, we have about 11 inches to the bottom of the trailer jack and that's hit a couple of times it's been bent we have about eight to nine inches of clearance here for the front tank the back of the trailer has 13 inches of clearance We've got some new tires on it. I'll probably stay with the tires I've got, but the next time around, I'll probably buy some taller tires, especially since I have more clearance between the fender and the tire after this lift kit. Uh, right now, the way it sits, we've got to the lip, right now about an inch and a quarter, and then to the inside, we've got about two inches of clearance. What I've got here is a Dexter, K7138400 conversion kit and I bought it off of Amazon $49 and one penny. It comes with all the nuts and bolts you're supposed to have and spacers and it's got lots of U-bolts. There's like four of them. And then you've got your spring uh, seats and then you've got some other spring plates. Dexter is usually pretty good products. And then we have installation instructions. All right, the, object, the objective of this kit is to take, you see how the axle sits up on top of the springs here? Well, we're gonna take these U-bolts loose and we're gonna put the axles, the springs on top of the axle up here. So you should get the, the diameter of the spring at least for a lift but actually I think you're going to even get the thickness of the, uh, the spring itself so this could result in three or four inch lift on it my first step is going to be jacking the trailer up and blocking it up on jack stand so that it doesn't fall on me and it takes the weight off of the springs but before I do that I'm going to put penetrating oil on these four bolts because I'm going to have to undo them and they've been tightened over 10 years and never been messed with so uh, putting penetrating oil on there first is going to help out things later on after i put the oil on there then i'll get the jack stands under it and get it all blocked up you just bust your lug nuts loose break them loose you don't have to take them all the way off but bust them loose before you lift the tire up off the ground it's easier to bust the lug nuts loose with your tool when the tire when the tire is on the ground now we got both the wheels off. You can see how the axle is U-bolted. So you have to undo these nuts. These are the U-bolts. So the axle is sitting on top of the spring. And so we are going to undo the four bolts here. There's four of them. And remove the axle from on top of the springs. The axle is pretty heavy, so we're going to have to slide it out once we get it all loosened up. Now you can see I got the U-bolts off. This is the hardware that came off of it. Two U-bolts, four nuts, and the spring pad on both sides. I used a three-quarter inch deep well impact socket and a breakover bar. I have air tools, but I actually parked the trailer too far away <laughs> and my hose won't reach. So I decided to go ahead and use manual tools. Uh, once it's broken loose, this, is, this tool is really good for breaking it loose, but once it's broken loose, a ratchet's fine. There's a little half-inch ratchet. You can use a 19-millimeter socket or a three-quarter-inch socket. Now that I've got it loose, my original plan was to lift it up. You just lift the axle up and slide it out. The problem is I don't think this hub will fit through that gap. If it does, it's going to be pretty tight. If it doesn't fit, you're going to have to undo the spring. You have to break uh, loose the spring either here or here so that it can drop down and you can get the uh, 
hub the axle off of the spring. Now some people flip the axle over and do it the cheap way. They don't buy any more parts for it. They just flip it over and put the the spring seat under the uh, spring. The problem with flipping the axle over is that it has a crown that the axle is actually bent. It's got a crown right here that cambers the tires in. So if you flip this axle over, then you ru ruin the camber on the trailer and it may have more difficulty tracking for you. We undid the spring in the front. So we undid one bolt. This bolt has got a knurl on it, so it bites into the frame. You're not gonna turn this bolt while it's inside the hole. It's designed not to turn. It's a 13 16 head with a 7 8 inch nut. So you have to loosen the nut and get it close to getting off and then bang the bolt with a hammer to get these knurls. You gotta push it this way to disengage these knurls so that you can pull that bolt out. Once you pull the bolt out, the spring drops down and the axle assembly slides off of the spring. Now I've got to put the springs back up and then start putting the axle onto the springs. Okay, I put the bolt back in, rehung the springs. When you tighten this thing, make sure that these knurls here go back in to this metal bracket and make sure the head of this bolt goes in there flush with this metal bracket, All right? You gotta tighten it, tight. Takes a lot of muscle to get all this stuff done. But if this is not tight, and this bolt is gonna spin, and that nut's gonna come loose and your springs are gonna come off. So make sure that thing is tight before you call it a done deal. Got the spring out from under the trailer. And we've got these little saddles here that have to go on them. And they recommend that you tack weld these on to the axle. And so right now the bend is down on the axle. Okay, the spring pads are on the wrong side. So I have to go that way, like that. And put this on here. And you're supposed to adjust this to where this is the same as this. This distance, this, this pad here is exactly parallel. This pad, so So you've got this saddle here, and you've got the new one with the adjusting nuts right here. And it goes on here, and they want this tack welded in here and here. But they want this pad to be exactly parallel to this pad. So the top one, the new one, parallel to this one. So what you've got to do is make sure the distances from here to here are exactly the same. And then you weld it on. You can adjust these nuts. It says it's recommended to weld them on. You don't have to weld them on. It's not required. But you do. I'm going to go ahead and weld mine on. So I'm going to take this off. Clean some bare metal here and here. And then put this on. Get it adjusted parallel. And then tack weld it in. Okay. We've got the tack welds in. Cleaned off the slag and it's ready to put some black paint on it, seal it up and get it put on the trailer. So we've got the axle in place, we've got it painted. Now there's a hole in the perch right there, that little thing. And it, this alignment stud from the springs fits in that hole. And that keeps it aligned front to rear. Both springs have that. So what we're going to do is lift the axle up and put the studs in both of them. And then we can put the U-bolts on and bolt it up. Okay, now I've got them torqued down. They wanted them torqued down 45, 45 to 75 foot-pounds. I've got them at 70. And you can see how the U-bolts now are pointing up before they were pointing down. The spring is on top of the axle where it used to be underneath the axle. I haven't raised or lowered the trailer here on the jack stand, and 
the axle is actually significantly closer to the ground, I'm going to have to jack the trailer up just to get the, new, the tire back on. We've got the wheels all back on, everything's torqued down, so now we're going to do our final measurements. Uh, I hope you can see that there's quite a bit of a gap right there, so there's a significant uh, height difference. Okay, I think before we had 13 inches back here, now we've got 20 inches in the back. Here we had about an inch of clearance between the lip and the top of the tire, now we've got right at about 6 inches, so we gained about 5 inches there. At this tank, it was about eight inches off the ground, and now it's about 12 inches off the ground, so we gained about four inches there. I've still got the same receiver in, and I could make it up a little bit higher, and that would raise the gap here between the jack and the ground. It would also raise the front end of the trailer a little bit. It's a little bit nose down now because of the, the lift on the trailer. Please keep in mind that this lift was performed on a single axle trailer with no brakes so if you had brakes you might have to extend the wires or the hydraulic lines to be able to compensate for the lift also if you had a double axle you're going to have to have two of these kits to be able to lift your trailer up